Well, who could it be? That tenderly holds my trembling hand. And who is the one? And who is the one that speaks in a voice I understand? Well, who could it be? Well, who could it be that make it the raging storm to cease? It's God's only Son. It's God's only Son, the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Well, God's only Son. Well, God's only Son will hold to my hand and answer my prayer. And God's only Son. And God's only Son, a mansion so grand he has gone to prepare. Thank God when I reach, Thank God when I reach a place where a haven of rest awaits, that God's only Son will open the gate. Will open the gate, no matter how long. No matter how long life's weary, some pilgrimage. Maybe no matter how wide, no matter how wide or stormy life's raging waters be, I'm bound for that place. I'm bound for that place where all of God's faithful children go, and God's only Son, and God's only Son is with me. I know is with me. I for God's only Son, for God's only Son, will hold in my hand and answer my prayers. And God's only Son, and God's only Son, a mansion so grand He has called to prepare. Thank God when I reach, thank God when I reach that place where a haven of rest awaits. That God's only Son, that God's only Son will open the gate. Thank God when I reach, thank God when I reach that place where a haven of rest awaits. That God's only Son, that God's only Son will open the gate. Will open the gate. He was born in a stable in a ball. of sin this world it turned me down and Satan it told me you're nothing but hell bound he said you're never gonna win your soul's forever lost but then I heard how Jesus paid it all on that old rugged cross and the only thing he bought was me when he shed his blood on Calvary, I'm redeemed by his blood for eternity. Oh, the only thing he bought was me. Forgiven and forgotten, 
want was me. Just 
Tonight we're going to begin, we're still continuing in our subject on basic Bible doctrine. And uh, tonight we're, we, well we finished up the past two weeks, we looked at the doctrine of believers' baptism. Uh, and then the, the doctrine of the Lord's Supper last week, we talked about that. And, and uh Tonight we're going to begin, it's going, not going to be covered in one week, I can tell you this, on the doctrine of prayer. Y'all know that prayer is one of my favorite subjects. 
to, to, to speak about and to preach about and to, and to look at in the Word of God. And I'm grateful that God has, has, uh, has blessed us to be able to study, to know what prayer is about. And uh, I've got outlines in my, in, at the house in, in my file cabinet of, I think, about 30 messages that I preached uh, earlier this year or last year uh, uh, that, that, that on the subject of prayer. Got some in my Bible I never have preached yet. And, and, uh, and uh, I've learned more in the past year about prayer than ever have. I prayed probably more at times in this past year than I ever have and then I prayed seemed like less uh, than I ever have. Uh, there's one thing about it, prayer uh, is a battlefield. Uh, when you pray, know this, that you're praying and God wants you to pray and God honors prayer, but Satan will do everything he can to stop prayer from taking place. Now, why is that? If you remember a few weeks ago, we preached on, uh, on prayer, and, and uh, we preached on pray, effectively praying, praying for the lost, and, and uh, we said that there's the only thing that Satan has no defense for is prayer. Right. There's nothing that he can do. So he, he, the best thing he can do to, to, to ward off prayer of God's people is to keep us from praying. And that's what he'll do. Anybody ever had that happen in your life? The, the devil ever just got your attention and got you away from God and, and just caused you not to want to pray? They might well throw them halos down tonight and, and because uh, it's all probably happened in every one of our lives. There comes times when it's, we just don't want to pray. And it's never, I don't know for you, it may be, it's never easy to pray, Brother Michael. It's never easy to pray. You say, preacher, I don't think, well, I, I'm, you're probably more spiritual than I am. To me, it's always a struggle. To me, I've, it's always a battle and a war. To me, I've always got to, I've got to, to, to fight my flesh. Okay? I've got to go against my flesh. I've got to go against the, the devil. My flesh you don't want to pray as much as the devil don't want me to pray. Okay? And uh, when I would do good, evil is always present there. That's, that's the word of God, ain't it? And I believe praying is doing good, ain't it? I believe that's doing the right thing. I believe we ought to pray without ceasing. I believe that the Lord taught us that we ought to, to pray and, uh, and the devil wants us not to pray, and our flesh don't want us to pray. And our flesh is that evil, that wickedness, that we're at bad part. So tonight we're going to look at, begin to look at the doctrine of prayer. And, uh, and uh, in Psalm 65, and I want to go here because of, the, uh, because of this one verse. In Psalm 65, I'm just going to read one verse of Scripture, that being verse number 2. If you'll turn there in, you, in the Word of God and, and find your place and stand in honor of the reading of the Word of God right here. Psalm 65 and verse number 2. Well, let me read verses 1 and 2 that have things in order right there. The Bible said, Praise waiteth for thee, O God, in Sion. And unto thee shall the vow be performed. Listen, he's to who he's talking to. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Heavenly Father, help us tonight. Lord God, you know our need. I need your, your, your utterance. I need your unction. I need you to speak through me, God. Make it easy, I pray, to teach your word this evening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you. And be seated. O thou that hearest prayers. That's what the psalmist said. A song of David. David was writing this. David said that he acknowledged here. And there's many great statements made about God in the Bible. There's many things you can hear. You can hear folks quote statements about God. And God is love. And I'm glad God is love. And and I, I'm glad God loves me, ain't you? I'm glad that, that he loves me more than, than I love him. I'm glad of that. And, 
and I, I want to love him more, but, but God knows the truth about our love and how much we love the Lord. So, uh, but, ain't, but that doesn't affect how much he loves us. He continues, and he still loves us uh, uh, to the uttermost and to the utmost. But, and that's a good statement, that God is love. But I'm going to tell you something. It ought to excite a child of God uh, to know that, uh, that, that one of the greatest statements uh, uh, that's made in the Word of God for a child of God is that he hears prayers. Amen. God hears prayers prayers. O oh, thou that hearest prayer. Man, what a statement. If a child of God knows how to pray and will give himself to prayer, he can accomplish anything he desires for the glory of God. Amen. I want you to know that. Yeah. If, you, if you know how to pray and, and will apply yourself to prayer, now, when I say apply yourself to prayer, if you go back into any of the preaching that we done last year, you'll know that apply, that applying ourselves to prayer has more than just spending three minutes at a, t a day on our on our face to God. But applying ourselves to prayer has a deal. That's why Paul told the people at Thessalonica to pray without ceasing. To apply yourself that means to work at it. It means to strive at it. It means to struggle at it. It means to apply yourself unto prayer. Uh, but, but, you know, in doing this, when you, uh, when you pray and, and you give yourself to prayer, then, then, you, then you can accomplish things. You can have things. When you begin to pray, and pray in faith. I was thinking today as I, I went in, I put all this down this morning in the study and I, I, as I was studying and, and going over the word of God, I, I began to think about a lot of things. But then I, I was driving today, went to get some uh, some hay for the cows and was driving back and was alone by myself. And and uh, and I got to thinking about why we go to the to, to the book of Psalms. Why, why would I go to the book of Psalms and grab this scripture and use it? Because if you'll notice in the Psalm, the majority of the Psalms are written, and, and they're written in the purpose and for the and and their their need for God or their their need for deliverance was very imperative at most of the time. Uh, boy, they needed God's help. Uh, seemed like more than what you and I need it today. Uh, and it's not the fact that it, that we, that they need it, needed it more, uh, but it's but it's the fact that they wanted to be more pleasing to God probably than what we do. And they weren't uh, they weren't embarrassed to put their their petitions out there and say, uh, uh, God, I need you to bless, and God, I need you to help me. And uh, we we find throughout the Psalms that the psalmist would the different psalmists would write and would talk about uh, how that it would take God for them to to have victory. The psalmist David would write uh, before he would go to battle, and he would uh, talk about how that his foot had had almost slipped, and and how that he had almost gone off stray and gone away, but uh, but then he remembered the Lord, and, and in prayer he would go to God. We say Psalm 51, where that David being away from God and, and being in sin and being uh, living his life in a, in a most negative way, uh, away from God, bringing shame and reproach upon God, and, and then he would pray. He would put his prayer down, and he'd say, oh God, uh, you know, just restore unto me uh, the joy of thy salvation. Uh, he said, uh, renew a right spirit with Within me, I mean, just those things that, that David knew that there was that he was the king of of Israel, uh, but he knew that it was going to take God to give him the things uh, in which that he needed that he could go on another day. Right. So uh, there's nothing impossible with God, and there's nothing impossible for the child of God who knows to pray. Nothing impossible for the child of God who knows to pray. Now, what is prayer? First of all, prayer. I'm going to mention three things real quickly that I put down here this morning. Prayer is coming into the presence of God. In the Old Testament, you know what? Those folk had to go through a man to get to the presence of God to make their petitions known unto God. They had to go through another man. But God has made a way uh, through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has torn down the middle wall of partition 
and give us access to the throne room of God. That there's no other man got to hear our prayer and our request. But we can go to God personally. And we can ask God personally. We can bring him the desires of our heart. And God hears us. So prayer is coming into the presence of God. Number two, prayer is communing with the person of God. I like our president. I do. I like him a good bit. I like him a bunch. I like our president. But there's, a, there's no way that if I were to call... 1400 Pennsylvania Avenue then say let me talk to President Trump that I could go before him here his voice. I'm not going to do that. It's not going to happen. Why? He's thought to be one of the most if not the most important man in the world. Uh, that's, uh, that's the way he's thought of. But I can uh, I can go to God in person. And I can commune with the person of God. Amen. There's a few people that can go uh, before the president, but not everybody. But everybody that's been born again can go before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I'm going to get to the message here, to the lesson in just a minute. Number three. Not only is prayer coming into the presence of God and prayer communing to the, with the person of God, but prayer is claiming the promises of God. Prayer is claiming the promises of God. Now, God told us that we have access. And God said if we'll ask anything according to his will, then he heareth us. It's not how much you know about prayer. And it's not how much you study about prayer that will accomplish things in your life, but it's how much you will pray. How much you will pray. I was thinking today, before I get to the first point, I was thinking today about what we what, what we done last year. After camp meeting last year when I challenged the church to pray, and I challenged y'all and, and about praying and asking God to give us a building. And uh, praying and asking God to, to, to give us that, that we, we didn't know how to pray, but we went. And I, I can tell you this personally myself, that, that I went regularly to the throne of God. I can tell you that I went regularly and I, I, I begged God and I, I petitioned God. And I asked, but Mark, I didn't know what God was going to do. And I, I learned in praying about that. I told somebody this week, I learned in praying to be more specific in my prayer. I really did because God done just what I asked him. I asked him to give us a building and he did. It's just 45 miles away, okay? Or 30 miles away, something like that. And uh, But, you know, I never, I, I never had any idea of how that God was going to do what he was going to do. But I'd ask him. And I'm sure, and I think that some, some others of you uh, had been praying and had done the same thing. And it's because of that, of that constant petitioning, going to God, that God hears us. And, and, and we go in faith and believing in faith and, and trusting in faith that God's able and he'll do just exactly what he's able to do. And God will answer prayer when we do this. So in the doctrine of prayer, when you think about praying and praying to the one that hears prayers, I wonder to this morning or this evening, uh, uh, what do we need to do to, to pray? Let's look number one tonight. This is what we're going to be looking at. The preparation for praying. The preparation for praying. You can turn to the book of Ephesians and uh, chapter number six. Ephesians chapter number six. And uh, we're going to look at verses number 10 uh, through 18. You know these scriptures. It hasn't been long. We preach from these scripture, uh, But I want to go back here tonight and, and let's look at the word of God for Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 18. The apostle Paul writing to the church at Ephesus to Timothy and others said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the for all saints. Now we looked at those. Uh, those uh, eight verses there, eight or nine verses uh, uh, here in that scripture, and we find the preparation for praying. First of all, you say, what in the world do you mean the preparation for praying? Because as I said to begin with, prayer is not just something that we should take a, a, lack, a lackluster attempt at. It's not something that we just poking in the dark at. But prayer is actually a, a time of warfare. It is a time of battle. Time, uh, prayer is how the saints of God are to fight their battles today. Uh, the Bible said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I shall repay. That's what God says. It's amazing today uh, that when we get in the heat of things, we want to take, uh, we want to, uh, to, to finish things up and have our last say and have, have the last words. We want to fight our own battles, uh, but we want God to do it in our manner and in the way that we think God ought to do it, but we want to get our two cents worth in there also. I want you to know that prayer does not work that way. I want you to understand that when we pray, we're to surrender ourselves to God and we're to give ourselves to God. The reason many of us never have a prayer answered or not have as many prayers answered is because that we come to God in the wrong manner for the wrong purpose uh, of seeking the wrong things. And you cannot come. There's preparation that you ought that you got to get in to pray. And listen to me. If I'm fighting a battle, the Bible said that what is Satan? He's the what? He's the prince and the power of the air. Uh, he's, uh, he's the God of this world. I want you to know that Satan has many, uh, that he has many handles that you could put on him and he hates uh, uh, the church of the Lord Jesus. He hates the God of heaven. He hates every child of God. He hates everyone that might be get, have the opportunity to get saved. Satan hates you and he hates your God and he hates everything about you. Yeah. Alright. Now I know that you say, I don't like all that, preacher. It don't make no difference whether you like it or not. Satan, you, you are an enemy. The Bible said our adversary, our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. His purpose, his desire is to destroy you. He wants to destroy you spiritually. He wants to destroy you physically. He wants to destroy you emotionally. He desires to destroy you. And the only, there, there's no way somebody said, well, I'll whip the devil. I know, sir. You begin to be braggadocious in yourself. I want you to know you're no match for the devil. You're no match for Satan. He will destroy you. First thing we got to realize is we must recognize, uh, A, we got to recognize our adversary. The Bible said in verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The, de the devil desires to keep you from praying. And if we do pray, he'll do everything he can to hinder you from continuing to pray. <coughs> Anybody ever been there? So my mama, I was talking to my mama the other day and she said, I'm talking about, she said, I, I, went, I, I prayed, son, I prayed last night. She told me, uh, and said, I, I went to sleep praying. And I thought to myself, I wanted to scold her a little bit, but I said, oh my goodness, how many times have I done that? I couldn't even scold her. She could have went to sleep doing a whole lot of things, other things besides praying. But she talked about going, you know what, sometimes we, uh, we, we go to sleep with things that bore us. 
Ain't that right? We go to sleep with things that bore us. And uh, brother, when we're talking to God, we ought not we ought not get bored. We ought not we ought not be boring or be bored when we're talking to the God of heaven. We ought to be very attentive and very awake and very aware that we're fighting a battle right then the whole time that I don't know about you, but when I begin to pray sometimes, uh, I, here's, here's the way my little old meager mind works. It ain't very big, but I, I begin to pray and Brother Michael, my, my mind will wander off somewhere else. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I said, oh goodness, Lord, what was I talking? And I'll be... And one thing helped me, I, that little yellow book we all read, I don't know how many of you read that, if you, if you paid any attention to that, that fellow said when things begin to affect his mind, when he begins to think on things while he's praying, he begins to pray about that thing. Yes, sir. That'll help you. Yeah. That, that'll help you. That'll help you. That, that just learning how to pray more. When, if I begin to pray and, and my wife comes to my mind and I'm praying and, I, and I'm thinking about what she said, how she's ugly to me the night before or something like that, I, I begin to pray and I begin to pray for her. All right? <laughs> y'all looking at me kind of crazy right now. Y'all's wife's ugly to y'all too. I know it. All right? All right, but 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 I'm sure she has times she wants to pray for me too. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> that she has times that she needs to pray for me. Sometimes, most time, I need to be prayed for a whole lot more than what she does. But I, I, what I, what I'm trying to tell you is that that the devil will attack. He'll do, he'll move in any direction he can and try to take your mind off prayer. And there's times that I have completely not I quit, completely quit praying because Satan has gathered my attention somewhere else. No telling what that prayer might would have accomplished if I'd have just stayed in prayer and stayed focused. You see, prayer, here's the thing, and I know that a lot of these, these, these real spiritual preachers, they're going to go haywire on this if they see it on, 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 uh, on YouTube, but it don't make me much difference. Uh, the, the prayer is a, has a whole lot to do with your mental capacity. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. It has, somebody said, I don't believe that. Well, you cut your mind off and pray then. It ain't going to happen. God gave you a mind. And without your mind, it's impossible to pray. I like when I pray, one thing that helps me is I begin to let my imagination, I try to direct my imagination to the throne of God. Begin to try to think upon God. I'm talking to the God of heaven. Uh, what used to, I used to think about how that I might measure up. How, when, I stand, when I'm there before the throne of God, I try to picture the throne of God and see a little speck of dust somewhere or another. And I see that that's me right there. And that begins to, I begin to realize, boy, what a great God. And it gathers my attention to God. But Satan, he'll do whatever he can to get our attention off of God. And, and we, he's our adversary. He's, uh, he's against us. Uh, many, uh, many of Satan's desires are, are written in the word of God. He, he lets us know. Luke twenty two thirty one. 31. We find the Lord Jesus tells Peter that he desires to sift us. He said, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. That's what Satan wants to do with you. 1 Peter 5 and 8. He desires to scare you. He said, be, vi be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And then he'll try to sidetrack you in any way that he can. In any way he can. Brother Joe come to me tonight, and I ain't telling him to tell about Brother Joe's business. He all seen him come up and sit down beside me. He's kind of batting up against the wall right now on deputation, trying to get folks to have where he calls. No, one fellow told him he didn't, when he gets qualified to be a missionary, call him back and all that kind of stuff. He said he ain't qualified because he ain't married. And that fellow just getting his Bible, he'd find it. Paul wasn't married. Well, I, that's discouraging. And everything, everything about that, you know what? The devil's just trying to get you to quit. That's all he wants you to do. Just quit what I tell you. Just keep on. Just keep going. You can't quit. You can't. Well, he, he preacher about exhausted my list. We'll get another one. I don't know where these preachers call me every day of the week almost uh, missionaries. I didn't realize we had so many missionaries. I'm glad they out there. But if I, if I had every missionary come here that calls me, I ain't no way I'd ever get to preach. That's 
right. No way I'd ever get to. I mean, and I'm not, I'm not complaining. But I'm telling you, you can, you can go a little further. You can find another list. You can find somebody else to call. You can find somebody else to talk to. And when the timing's right, God's going to make it all right. Just can't quit. So the devil will do everything he can to discourage you. He'll do everything he can to, to hinder you. The devil will, will try every way in the world. He, he'll, he'll try to sidetrack you and get you off a of course. B, also we must utilize our armor. Look at verse number 14. He said, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So to utilize our armor, the different parts of the armor are listed here. This armor is uh, it's, it's of no value unless we utilize it. If you just stack it up and say, boy, I got the armor of God. Don't do you no good, does it? You got to take it. You got to put it on. And you got to use it. There are six pieces of armor that's mentioned here. Five of those pieces are defensive pieces. Uh, they're, they're, they're defensive weapons, if you want to say. They keep you from the onslaught of the wicked one. There's one that's an offensive one. And we'll get there in just a minute. The last one that he mentions is that offensive one. It's the sword of the Spirit. Let's look at some things about this armor just a moment. There's three things we must have. Notice what he said here when I said we must have. Verse 14, look with me. Stand therefore, what's that next word? Having, Having what? Your loins girt about with truth. There is the girdle, if you will, of truth. Having your loins girt about with truth. Let me say this. Truth is the opposite of hypocrisy. Yes, Y'all yes, all right with that? We know something about hypocrisy. Every one of us in the house knows something about hypocrisy. There's one thing the flesh knows how to do, and that's to be a hypocrite. There's, that's one thing the flesh knows how to do. Uh, so we know that, that, that having our loins girt about with truth means that we would be the opposite of that hypocrite. Then he said that we got to have the breastplate of righteousness. In verse 14 you find that. Righteousness is this. It just simply means right living. Living right. And then he said that we got to I'll look at verse 14, verse, uh, verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The word, the, the shod, our feet shod or our shoes uh, speaks of our standing on the gospel. How that we stand on the gospel of Christ. Have that thing fixed up. Now there was three things there that, that we must have. Now, three things also look in verse number 17. And what? Take. So there's three things we got to take. Three things you have, three things you take. Take, number one, there's a taking the what? The shield of faith. Now, let me tell you this. Only as you pray, we pray with faith can we quench the fiery darts of the devil. I made a statement this past year, and, and God gave me, I've never heard nobody else make it, and, and I, boy, I, I said, boy, I'm, I come up with that, I thought it was good. Okay, y'all were just having moments, y'all just have something just good. It was, like old boy said, brother, brother Joe, it was good to me. Amen, it was, it was good to me, okay? And, and that is that, that faith is the fuel that propels our prayers to the throne of God. If you just speak mere words, I'm not telling you that, you, but if you just speak mere words without faith, 
I don't even call that praying, really. There's a whole lot of things we do, and a, lot, a whole lot of going through the motions we do, Brother Troy, that we're really not in desperation trying to get to God. We're really not trying to get to the throne of God. We're just doing it because we think we're supposed to. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to pray. But when we pray with that burden, when we pray through it with faith, knowing that there's a God on the throne in glory, that he's not just there. And, and somebody said, well, how does God listen to all the prayers that pray? And I don't know, but he's God and he don't have a problem with it. He don't have a problem with it. I don't know how God, I don't know how God does what he does, why he puts up with you and me, but I'm glad he does and I'm glad that he'll let us make our petitions known. And he said we can come boldly unto the throne of grace. We can bring the, our request unto him. We can speak them there to him. And uh, that, 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 that faith is what gets us to the throne of God. Number two, we see the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. That's what we must take also. Prayer, you know what it's good at? Protecting our mind. Protecting our mind. You know what? If the devil can ever get you, how many of you ever doubted? You ever doubted God? Oh yes. Yes, I have. And the rest of you, I don't believe you. You say you hadn't doubted him. I, 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 I've doubted God. I've doubted that God was would do. Not that he was able, but I doubted that he would for me. Right. Doubted that he would for me. And if the devil can ever get there, but that helmet of salvation, that prayer of, 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 uh, the, of praying and, and that knowing that we belong to him and that, that accomplishes it and we can keep them fiery darts of Satan from our mind. We got to have that. You might have take that. Number three, he said, in the sword of the spirit. The scripture is our offensive weapon against Satan. Jesus, what did he do when he was tempted by Satan? He said, it's written, didn't he? That's God in the flesh. That's God himself. You know how he battled? He battled with the book. He battled with the book. He battled with what, with what was written. He battled him with the word of God. You know, Satan can come to me and, uh, and, and tell me that I'm not saved, but I can take the book and I can say, oh yeah, I'm saved because the word of God says this. Somebody said, uh, how do you know you're saved? And I, no, you know you're saved because you got a feeling, oh no, I had that feeling a long time ago. It didn't last long, but I'm telling you what, I know I'm saved tonight because I've been born again and because the word of God tells me that what happened to me on that day, it's not something that's temporary. It's an eternal thing. Salvation is not by feeling, it's by faith. Amen. Amen. That's my pet peeve. I can't stand this feel good stuff and this spooky stuff that comes in coming along today and that you got to have a feeling about everything. There is a feeling when the Spirit of God moves upon you. You can't deny that. There's a feeling of humility. We was talking today to a gentleman and, and I was talking about the different things that go on in church. And I, Listen, I tell you what, it's not always high when the Holy Ghost shows up, Brother Michael. Sometimes there's a holy hush that comes over the place. And it's just as sweet right then. Some, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to back up. Can I recant just a minute? Can I tell you, it's more sweet right then than what it is when you're swinging from the chandeliers because a lot of that ain't nothing but a show. That's all it is. So we, them three things we got to we, we got to have and there's three things we got to take. But let's look at C now. We must rem memorize the admonitions. There are three admonitions that's mentioned in these verses. Verse number 10, I'm done after this. Verse 10, he said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's what he's charging. He said, I want y'all to be strong. Finally, my brethren, 
be strong in the Lord. And in the power of God. Verse 11, he said then, put on the armor of God, the whole armor of God. And then listen at verse 18. He said, praying always with all prayer and supplications in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. So basically, here's what he's saying. Let's alliterate this real quickly. He said, be strong, be suited, and be steadfast. Be strong, be suited, put on the whole armor, and then be steadfast, praying always. We must put them on. Brother Philip, they're no good. That armor is no good if we don't put it on, Brother Dean. Just absolutely no good. They're no good as an illustration, but as an armor, their sure victory lies in our prayer. If all you know to do is talk about the armor of God, and you never put it on, you've never won a battle by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If all you know to do is to talk about it, then you've never experienced victory. As I've told you before, when you notice and you begin to look at that, at that warrior that God describes, that God clothes that soldier. He's got the helmet of salvation. He's got the breastplate of righteousness. He's got the, uh, the, his loins girt about. He's got all this, his feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. He has the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith. He has all those things. But as you draw a picture, and if you were to put that, or if you were to put place each one of those things on that soldier, you'd still find at the end that there was a, spl- there was a place that was not, had no armor on it. No, nope, it's not the back. A soldier never does turn around and run, no how. There's another place in the front that still doesn't have the, the armor. And that's from his knees to the top of his feet. No armor there. Why is that? Because a soldier of God fights on his knees. A soldier of the Lord fights on his knees. You know what? You you also can't run if you're on your knees. You can't do it. So I'm just telling you tonight, there's parts of about our prayer life that we'll go each week we're looking at the doctrine of prayer. The next week we'll look on the promises of praying. And uh, but but it's just a, to to be able to pray is such a privilege, such an honorable thing, such a great thing to just have the privilege to pray. The doctrine of prayer tonight we looked at the preparations for praying. Put on the armor of God. Get ready to pray because it's it's more than just reciting words. And here's what folks will say: How I many? And I understand, I know these folks, and maybe some of you say it, I don't know, but I, I can't hardly tolerate somebody saying, Preacher, will you say a prayer for me? I don't like it. Because it's not about reciting something. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy, that, that's the word of God, I know. But th- that's not the Lord's prayer. That's the pattern prayer where he was teaching the, teaching the church how to pray. But it's not to be recited, that's not to be recited in thought that unless you're praying it from your heart. <laughs> and, and prayer is not about reciting something. Prayer is about talking to God. Brother Michael, if I look at you and I quote the, if I look at you and I say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, I'm reciting that. I mean, you can't hold a conversation if I'm just reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. You're going to know I'm a patriot. That's about it. 
If that's all I do is recite that, ain't you ain't got nothing from it. But if me and you sit down and talk, we can glean from one another. You can know what my burdens are, what my heart's desire is when I talk to you. And you do the same when, I, when you talk to me. So you see, it's more than just reciting words. Let's face it, how much do we go to God? And so many times, though so and so lead us in prayer, we want to sound spiritual. We want to sound real spiritual. What we ought to want to do is, we ought to just want to talk to God. The only prayer life you got is when you publicly pray and you ain't got a prayer life to start with. That's the only prayer life you have. You're in trouble. Truth be known, there's, that's the only, some of them's only, only prayer life some folks have. It's just when they're called on to pray. They need to get pre prepared to pray. Any questions or comments on what we looked at tonight?